Good morning, welcome to Mr. Al Dice Biology in his kitchen. Um, this morning I'm going to show you how to set up and use a potometer and how to get valid results. Uh, this is a potometer. You can see it has a capillary tube and then it connects up to some plastic here. There's a syringe and then there's some um, rubber tubing. Now a potometer is used for measuring water uptake um, which is equivalent to transpiration but because plants use water for photosynthesis and they might be using some of it for turgidity, um, it's not an exact measurement, but we assume that it is. So water uptake equals transpiration. Now, we're gonna show you how to set this up to get, be able to get valid results. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to fill this with water. So I've got a sink full of water here. I'm just gonna pop it in the sink and use the syringe and fill it up. We need to make sure but there's no air in, the in any of the tubes because if that happens, it will break the water column in the xylem and it will stop, the plant will stop taking up water. Okay, so we need to make sure there's no air in at all. So you can see, I'm just moving the syringe up and down, putting my fingers over the holes just to make sure there's no air bubbles in there. Okay, so that's now full. I'm gonna leave that underneath the water for the moment. Now, what I'm gonna to do today, I'm gonna to use some laurel, which I have snipped off my neighbor's um, bush next to my drive, because I haven't got one. I don't know what bush that is. Okay, and we're gonna see if I can get some of this into the um, potometer. Now, this one's probably a bit thick, so I'll swap it for another one. That one. Now, the key thing is we need to make sure also that no air gets into the xylem vessels here. So I'm going to cut it underwater to make sure no air gets into the um, xylem here. And I'm just going to cut it off and I'm going to do a diagonal cut. I may have to do a couple if, um, if it doesn't fit into the tube. Okay, so on the tip here, you can see there is some silicon tubing, which should make a nice seal onto this and be full of water. So I'm going to just push that on. Yeah, that's just about right. Okay, nice and sealed. Have a look underneath and there's no air bubbles in there. Yeah, good. All right, making sure the syringe is completely full of water as well before I take it out. Okay, I'm just gonna pause the video there for a moment. Okay, so I've taken the plant and the potometer out of the sink now. Okay, and what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna dry everything down with a tea towel and I'm gonna check there's no leaks because remember we mustn't let any air get in and also we want to be able to see the water uptake. I'm also going to dry off the leaves uh, just so that actually transpiration will take place. If the leaves are wet, then obviously um, less transpiration is going to be able to occur if the tomato are wet and all that kind of stuff. So just leave them at that. Now you can see that I have clamped my plant in position, okay, um, so that um, it's not moving around in the potometer, which would affect the results collected. Um, affecting the, ac in, uh, the action, it also might mean we get um, breaks in the water column and things like that. All right, so just supporting it there, okay, and then just checking that there's no leak. So I've got, if I come right in, you can see, okay, there's no air bubbles getting in here, there's no water leaking out of any of the gaps or anything like that. Now, if there, um, if there were some little leaks, I could use some Vaseline or you know, grease or something to seal, the, seal the, tube, the gaps. So what we then do is we're going to um, start to measure our rate of water uptake. All right. Okay, so I've just zoomed in so you can see the apparatus a bit more clearly. So just here you can see the end of the water column. All right, in the capillary tube. It's been running for a little what, few minutes just so I could, it could acclimatize and just check that it was actually working. Okay, so it started up here. So it means I have got a continuous column of water, got no breaks. I've supported my plant so it's not gonna break the water column. Because um, obviously if it does, if we get breaks in the water column, we're gonna block the xylem. All right, so we need that continuous column of water. Now you can see that it's actually moving quite fast. All right, so, and what I don't want to do is the air bubble to get down to this part here because then I'd break the water column and it would stop working. So I'm gonna use, I want the bubble not to move too fast, I'm gonna use the syringe just to push it back up, okay, um, up to the top. And it doesn't actually really matter where you push the bubble to to start with, 
okay? Because you've got a, a scale here that you can measure um, the distance in millimeters. The reason we use a capillary tube is just because it's narrower and that means that for a small volume of water that might be taken up by the plant, um, it will move a bigger distance which reduces the uncertainty in our data. Remember if you had a big capillary tube, you know, a big wide tube, the water being taken up by the plant wouldn't necessarily move, take up that much water and the distance would be small so any uncertainty in your measurements would be greater. Remember that the uncertainty on any um, ruler is plus or minus a whole division on the ruler. Okay, so that's important. All right, um, so all of these things will help us to measure accurately and ensure we get valid data in terms of not having any leaks. All right, you can see it's actually moving quite fast. So what we can do is we can set this up in, our diff in any conditions that we want, all right, and we can measure the distance that it moves in a set length of time. So what I might do is see if I can get my big clock off the, off the kitchen wall. Will that fit in? Yes. Giant clock. Okay. All right. So um, what we'll do is we'll let it run. Oh, you can see me. Hello. Um, <laughs> we can let it run for um, a set length of time and we can measure the distance that it moves. So, okay. This is very high tech, everyone. I'm just going to push it back up to the top because it's getting near to the end using the syringe. So it's starting there at, at one. Oops, no, gone too far. Put it back a bit. Okay, so it's starting at zero, uh, 15 seconds. So we can measure for a minute and see how far it moves. Now, what you should do is you might leave it to, um, to do transpiration or water uptake for maybe five minutes but you'd maybe measure the distance that it moves every minute so that you can see that the rate of uptake is consistent and that it's not changing because if it did change within you know, if it was different every minute then you'd know something else was going on and some sort of condition had changed or you had a problem all right um, one of the things you do need to make sure is your plants are fully turgid before you start otherwise a lot of the water will be being used um, just to get the cells turgid. So you can see we just had a minute and it's moved three and a half centimetres or 35 millimetres. Remember, we tend to record data in millimetres. Okay. So you can just see the capillary tube, the end of the, the bubble is just there. Okay, so it's definitely working. So I've had a successful use of photometer in my kitchen. In a moment I'll talk to you about how we can use the data we've collected and what should we, we should do with it. Okay, so let's imagine we've collected some data. So we had our first one, it moved 35 millimeters. Okay, um, and let's say we'd repeated it five times then we could calculate um, an, an average or a mean rather. Okay, now that obviously is, is fine but it's, the distance it's moved is 35 millimeters that's not a volume. So if you want to calculate the um, volume that you've measured, okay, you need to remember that we're using a capillary tube there, so it's a cylinder, so we need to know the volume, and to do that, we need to do pi r squared, which will give us the area of the end of the tube. All right, and we've multiplied that by the distance will equal the volume. And in this case it'll be in millimeters cubed. Alright? So pi r squared L or pi r squared D will give us the volume. Okay, and then all you have to do to get that into a rate is divide that by the time. So um, volume divided by the time. For example, we just did it in minutes, so min, yeah? Will be will equal to uh, millimeters cubed min to the minus one, or we could do it in seconds. So it'll be millimeters cubed seconds to minus one. Okay. So remember, you have to be able to you have to know these formulae and how to calculate um, volumes of a cylinder and things like that and um, areas of a circle. Be careful. Quite often they might quote you the diameter because you'd measure the diameter 
of the capillary tubes, so you'd need to halve it to get the radius. Another thing to remember is, thinking about our plants here, imagine I've got a load more plants here, and I was doing lots of different experiments. Maybe I had this one just in, um, in a, pl a clear plastic bag to make it humid, and maybe stick this one in some wind, maybe make this one hotter. Now the issue we've got with using these plants is, if we look at them, they've all got slightly different numbers of leaves on them. So the area of leaf is, that are available is also um, different. So we need to take that into account. So when you're doing calculations, okay, you would take your rate, okay, so you take your millimeters cubed per minute, and then you'd have to divide that by the surface area of the leaf. Okay, so now that would be very time consuming because you'd have to actually measure around all the leaves or maybe take a sort of do a sort of rough mean area of the leaves by you know um, finding the area of one or two or three leaves and then counting up the number of leaves on your plant um, but then if you do that so you divide you take your rate and divide that by the surface area you're then going to have a rate per unit area of leaf okay So for example, if we do, we've done that in centimetres squared, it would be millimetres cubed of water uptake per minute per centimetre squared of leaf area. Okay.